I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do have some new business. Uh, sorry, kicking over the water jugs. Um, new business. Uh, we are going to have a change to the bylaws for the um, a small change, um, just to the mission statement, and that will be posted for 28 days for, per our bylaws, um, and it'll be posted uh, over here on this side, and then in the back on the left hand side, and we will vote on that. Um, at the May meeting. Uh, the demographic survey, um, if uh, you have not filled it out, I'd like to request that you do. Um, it's going to help us with planning for sure. Um, event activity and follow-up committee. Um, we are looking to start a committee that will come into the hall after an event um, and go through a checklist. There'll be uh, two people uh, that will come together. Uh, if you would like to be on that committee, uh, please uh, step up here and see me. We'll put you on the list. Um, we need to start doing a better job of um, inspecting the hall for the next person that's coming in, so we're gonna have a committee that does that after the events. And um, it will be just the hall and the kitchen uh, that will be looked at. So if you're interested in that, uh, being on that committee, we'd love to have you. Um, we are going to have um, social club board members on that as well. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, we are also looking for a tech-savvy person. Um, and uh, that is because Shirley Bishop has asked for someone to shadow her. She does all of our tickets for events and um, she does the flyers as well. And she um, just feels it's time for somebody to start to learn what she does and how she does it so that um, you know we have a backup. So if you are interested in learning how to do that or would like to do that, um, please let me know and we'll um, get you with Shirley. Uh, going to move on to committee reports. Um, and Deb, if you would want to read the minutes from the last meeting. We are going to read the minutes, by the way. It became too much of a chore to not read them. Social Club minutes from our meeting on March 6th. Our board members present were President Becky, Vice President Lorna, me, Debbie Schultz, as Secretary, Sharon Berichter as Treasurer, Cindy Windermere as Assistant Treasurer, Sharon Cooper as Entertainment Director, and Brenda Cedarberg is our Correspondent Secretary. She was not present. Our meeting was called to order at 9. We um, fulfilled our Pledge of Allegiance, as we always do. New business, Lorna Pollock provided all sorts of results from the tag sale. Uh, income from table sales, 258. Income from the bake sale, 673. Income from kitchen sales, 321. Income from sale of donated items, $370. Total profit from the tag sale was $1,380.75. <laughs> No, this is my personal comment. Did you notice where all of, most of our money came from? Yeah. <laughs> February seven minutes were um, were distributed for review, and our next committee report was our treasurer's report. We had an opening balance of twenty thousand five hundred thirty-three dollars, ending balance of twenty-one four fifty-four. We had resident donations for the stove of 717, resident donations for bathroom, 10,461, social club donation for the stove, 4,000, social club 
balance $6,275.97. Photo directory. Sherry Collins provided samples of the new photo directory. She'll take orders of coffee and bingo. Cost us $5. There are 162 photos in the new directory. I don't have to read these? Not all of them. Okay. We also discussed future activities and suggestions. We went through all of those and all of you were in provided input. Um, our open discussion was we want to make sure that social club events must be open to the entire park. Activities with limited invitation must cover their own costs. Maximum space for Tanner Hall, Paul reminded us, is only 230 people. Um, place agenda minutes and treasures reports will be on directory spot. Our survey of residents, we will again post that later. Um, they talked about neighborhood block parties, taco party, pizza party, all state party. Um, lots of things were discussed, things that we can do. Um, we need volunteers, of course, for all activities and events, and it wouldn't be possible without everyone. Women and men's Christmas luncheons will be held in Tanner Hall. We need uh, volunteers. Chairs of activities and events, will be in charge of the activity or the event, not the social club. Anniversary recognition will be decided and voted at the next meeting. Um, correspondence, we have thank you notes were read from Mary of family of Mary Sheenahan, Sheenaman and from the family of Donna Maloney. And they were for the $25 donations from our park to Tidewell Hospice in their honor. The minutes were approved and next meeting is today at 9 a.m. We adjourned at 9.58. Any questions, any changes? I have a correction. On the, um, the stove and the bathroom donation, those totals are <coughs> for the month of February. Okay. The month of February, the stove donation is $20 and the bathroom is $20. Okay. For the month. I will make those corrections with Sharon's uh, corrections. Corrections accepted. Minutes. Can I get an approval for the minutes? Send it proof. Thank you. Proof is read. Seconded. Proof is read. All right. Thank you. And corrected. Yeah. Yeah, we change. Uh, lost my page now. <coughs> uh, treasures report. Uh, Cinda is going to be the voice of Sharon because Sharon has, a, she can't talk because all she does is cough. Okay, treasurer's report is as follows. Um, we had a beginning balance of $21,454.69. Of that, <coughs> 717 were stove donations and Handicap bathroom donation of ten thousand four hundred and sixty-one seventy-two. Check number twenty-eight forty to Paul Norton for eighty-nine dollars and fifteen cents for tag sale kitchen stuff. Uh, check number twenty-eight forty-one to Priscilla. I'm not going to say your last name <laughs> for tag sale kitchen stuff for twenty-six fifty-five. Um, check number twenty-eight forty-two. For Cajal Dunn, show of $1,000. Check number 2843, Sharon Berkter, her tub for Social Club Records, $9.61. Check number 2844 to Paul Norton for Kitchen Supplies, $107. 2845, Gary Cook for Audio Equipment, $148.72. Check number 2846 to Robert Emmons for dance, $500. Check number 2847 to Sharon Berkter for office supplies, $3350. Check number 2848 to Linda Cook for the ice cream social, $123.28. Check 2849 to Paul Norton for kitchen equipment, $183.58. Check 2850 cash replenish coffee box, 2439. Check 2851 PCV sales tax for March 
921, check 2851. Two, two. Oh, two, okay. Um, that was also the same check. To Tidewell Hospital, uh, 150 for six residents. Memorial. For the month, our total expenses were $2,404.99. We had deposits of $4,692.42. No stove donations, $110 for the bathroom. Um, balance it, for a balance of $23,742.12. Of that, $717 is for the stove donation and the handicap bathroom is 10,571.72. We also have a, a social club donation to the stove for $4,000, which leaves the social club balance at 8,453.40. Thank you, Cindy. Any questions? Um, I did want to comment a little bit about the audio equipment. We purchased that um, <coughs> portable amplifier or whatever it is. I'm sorry. A speaker and microphone. Yeah, that's what it is. Speaker and microphone. And we uh, used it uh, during the picnic and also at the sunrise service. It's going to work well for those things that we just need to take it out and bring it right back in. So um, that was a great purchase. Um, the next one, um, I know there's been some activity on the stove, but I don't know if Dave was, I don't think you were here, right, when they were doing all that? So, um, we'll wait till the pre-board or the board meeting to, yes? I could give you an update. You would help her out. I was going to say Thanks, Roger. Uh, they came out last Friday and totally messed everything up. They came with no tools to work with. They were supposed to dig the trench underneath the sidewalk. They didn't come with anything to dig the trench. They didn't have a step ladder. They had to <clears throat> go up and over and down how they thought they were going to get up there. But anyway, it was kind of a mess, and the kitchen's a mess. Chuck took care of it. They're coming out Tuesday, and they will make it right. But it's a mess right there, and I don't know when anything will be done. First, we have to repair what they've done back there, and that was feral gas, so I don't know how they could, they didn't speak hardly any English at all, so it's hard to communicate with them. Um, okay. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, that's the update. It's not okay. what you want to hear, but no, it's fine. what you see is what you get. Right? The main thing you want to know is they're not getting paid. Yeah. Any, any company named Farrell is probably something to worry about anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Um, Debbie did just want me to uh, let everybody know now that the season has calmed down a little bit. Um, there will be some additional articles uh, that she is doing in the Villager. Uh, one for sure is going to be uh, the hurricane and then what's happening with um, all of our park. Um, committees and things like that so uh, look for that in the villager to come and then we do have one correspondence which uh, Brenda's not here so um, Debbie's going to read it this was a thank you received it says thank you for thinking of us and dropping off canned goods we appreciate you and we'll keep Port Charlotte Village in our prayers God bless St. Vincent de Paul, St. Antonio Church. Thank you, Debbie. All right, um, the last would be, uh, well, not the last, but the last thing on this part is the old uh, business, which uh, was events for 24-25. Uh, last meeting, we went through and took recommendations and things like that, and we ended up uh, eliminating some just because of capacity issues and um, other events that were similar. Uh, so some things that we did 
land on as a uh, board are the steak dinner, the golf cart tailgate party, the ladies and the men's Christmas luncheon, movie night in Tanner Hall, uh, combining ice cream and strawberry social, and then we're gonna do the luau and the welcome back party. Uh, the 50th anniversary, we did say uh, we were going to um, vote for going forward after next year, but we're going to hold off on that because I feel like it's too soon to um, vote for 2026. So uh, we'll wait and uh, talk about that at a later date in the year. They are doing uh, the 50th anniversary tea for the beginning uh, of the year. Hopefully Elizabeth finds a place to stay or she's going to be knocking on doors. Um, <laughs> so she said she would stay a week at each person's house if you would allow her. But she is, uh, got, uh, she is the chair of the 50th anniversary tea and she has her committee um, ready to go. So um, if anybody uh, has not signed up that... Uh, qualifies for the 50th tea, please do so, or let uh, Elizabeth know. Um, those were the events that we added. We do, um, we did already get some uh, chair people for those events, so um, I'm putting out um, today on the back board um, the list of events that are open um, for people to chair them if they would like to. Um, if not, we will not have them. Um, we have to have people in the within the social club to uh, chair the events. Um, there are, um, 13 that are open right now, and that does include um, this year's Thanksgiving and Christmas potlucks. So if anybody is interested in doing those, um, I know poor Lorna had to scramble uh, last year. So um, if you are interested in uh, the potluck um, for Thanksgiving and or Christmas, please let us know. Uh, so that is two of the events um, that are open for this year. Uh, the other ones are new events, um, as well as dinners, and the 17 state is open for anyone who would like to uh, chair that event. So uh, again, I'll post this in the back um, so that everybody can um, have a look at it. And if you are interested, um, please contact somebody on the social club board and we'll uh, put it, fill it in for you as the chair. And then uh, we will have an event forum for Mary. <laughs> Mary is uh, doing a great job at putting together um, all the events. A lot of people have already filled out their forms and got them into her. Um, so if you have not done that and you are planning to chair an event, please fill out your event form and get it to her. Dates are filling up quickly. Um, and some of the new events um, are go you know, slipping in there. Um, one thing I did want to mention is there will be a memorial um, day service program in the Veterans Park, and there will be a Veterans Day uh, event in the um, Veterans Park. Those event forms uh, will be filled out shortly and given to um, Mary. And I asked for an event form just because I want to make sure it doesn't con con there's not a conflict with something else that's happening. Um, so um, we really are trying to uh, you know get things in order uh, for next season. So um, we will be doing um, policies and procedures. We've been working on them, but it's a process. Jeanette. Anyone who has a husband or a wife who's passed away uh, and was in the military, if you could get a picture to me, they will be put up on the memorial uh, posters that we do every year. It doesn't have to be a big picture. We have a wonderful technician here who gets the picture. And they don't have to be in uniform. He always puts a beautiful background of the American flag or something like that if they're not in uniform. 
but if you have, it has to be a spouse or a partner who has passed away or um, what, but was in the military at some point. I need to know uh, what, what service they were in, I mean, what branch of the service, the years they were in, and what their uh, status was. Like rank. Rank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I need it before May 15th. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jeanette. Uh, let's see. Becky? Yes. Uh, I just have another. I just have another question about the event forms. Roger and I were talking about those from diff our different perspectives of working with them. And the thing that always is kind of a little puzzlement is there are some events, like I'd say the 50th anniversary tea, where you have to have time ahead of time to set up. And, and the question is, should you write down that time too? Or how do people handle that? Because if there isn't the, sometimes there becomes a conflict because one bit isn't over, is going on, and you really need that time to set up for the next one. And we, I just wasn't sure how you wanted that handled or what's the best way to do that. I don't know what other people have done. or yeah. There should be some consistency on how we do that. Yeah, there is a spot on the form that asks um, if you need to set up before. Uh, so uh, folks have been filling that out. Um, doesn't always happen the way we want, though, unfortunately. There's a way to handle that on the uh, Google Calendar that we're using that uh, Lauren has got, and that is when you schedule it, you can also put in another event, uh, eight to four setup. And that would be on the calendar so that Al would know when he would, when to do something that the Hawaiian uh, 50th anniversary thing was being set up. It just showed as to, 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 as the one hour thing at two o'clock. A little communication with him would have stopped that, but I also, can't, can't I fix I that. Question. If someone's having a private party, um, the hall uh, that day, I'd like the hall to be closed. Do I notify the people that are playing cards that day, or just do you do, you do that? Because you've got people playing, um, it's, it's on a Thursday. You've got people in the poker room. We will definitely talk about it at coffee okay. and post it, I'll post it on Facebook that the hall will be closed. Yeah. Because um, the, my, my son in law will be bringing equipment in. Yeah. And, and we will also put it on 901. I'll do that. Okay. Thank you. What's the date again? 423? May, 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 Okay, um, any other questions or? I, I, Go ahead, Jane. I don't need a microphone. Um, when you say the back bulletin board, you can find a, a form. I'm very confused as to is, what, is it the community info? The community info board, the general info board. Um, I'm just confused. The left, always the community is where I post, like if I want the survey or if you're going to sign up for something. All right. Yeah. It's on the left. That's where the change to the um, bylaw by mission statement will be posted as well. Okay, thank you. Community info would be for like our disaster guide and things like that. Anyone else? <coughs> All right. Anyone want a motion to close?
close this meeting? Oh, I have one other thing before you close. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, and maybe you're doing this uh, when you're uh, looking at um, replacement or somebody to work with Shirley Bishop. I think there's, if I remember right, patented job descriptions for those positions, and so you, you, yeah, you, you're going to go through. There's not one for Shirley's, but oh, there isn't. Oh, no. I thought there was. Oh, okay, no. all right, thank you. But then will you be? There will be Good. after. Somebody can shadow her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great, thank you. All right. Sue, behind you. Behind you. Um, an elephant in the room. If this, if your board could take on the question of residents are upset about the fact that when we have an event, people get in here at all sorts of times and reserve tables. Mm -hmm. um, if there was a way. Maybe we're to the point where if you want to pay more, you get an upfront seat. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's not against anybody, but you know, I, I get a text or a call I saying, know. my wife went up there seven hours before the event and all the tables were reserved, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. But either nobody gets in the hall until 15 minutes before the event or something's got to happen because it is causing some issues in the park. All right. So, yep. It has been you. for a long time. I know. So, um, There's got to be a solution. We'll, we'll vote. We'll discuss it and vote. Uh, we want to shut the doors and lock them until a certain for certain events, not for every event, yeah. but for certain events, definitely. I mean, even the horse races, people are going out. People get in there. I know. And, and I then know. people come in and they move your stuff because they're mad because you reserve. Just so that everybody would know, there will be one table that will be for anybody that's in a wheelchair sure. or anything like that. So, um, other than that. My right. opinion too is everybody gets in at the same time. Just a, a really egregious example: somebody came in and took four tables in a row and just put their name on every single seat in four tables. Right. Agree. Um, I need to address this a little bit about reserving tables. I agree with you. And I, I don't have a problem with that. In fact, my husband and I talked about this uh, just in the last month, about maybe no one coming in till like a half an hour before it starts. Roger, to what you were talking about, Jeannie is helping us. We are not gonna break even on a lot of these events because of Jeannie and Ginger and some other people that are bringing outsiders in we're able to break even. So all I'm asking is if we do this, you know, the community needs to support all the events, all year long, not just my events that Gary and I set up for. But you know, if, if we can't break even for the events, then the events aren't gonna happen because we can't keep going in the hole so that's all I'm asking. You know, I agree with you. You know, I'm thinking like maybe a half an hour before the event, the doors will be closed. Everybody gets to come in at the same time. You pick your seat. And, you know, we just, we need the help of the community if we're gonna do that, because then we need more people to come out and support the events. Okay, thanks. I'm Charlie Lyons and I live in 473. I have another viewpoint of this about reserved tables. That as a welcoming community, you can come here and all the tables are filled and all the people you've ever spoken to in the whole time in the park are sitting with their friends. And it means how welcoming is that? So the other thing that could happen is that you don't reserve every seat at the table. What if you leave a couple and if you see somebody you don't know and say there's space at our table? 
because that's to be a welcoming community takes a little from the rest of us too. To, to make sure that everybody who signs up for something comes in, feels welcome, and has a great time. Thank you. Great idea. Anyone else? I have one last thing. I'm sorry, it was first on my list, but I'm getting old and I'm forgetting forgetful, but you, you're so efficient, you folks, you went through the meeting so fast, but I was wondering if at some point in time in your operations that you're doing is that you might consider uh, putting together a budget for the review of the so the uh, social club just funny you mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good <laughs> so next month uh, we will be public publicizing the budget oh, <laughs> well anyway we'll be putting it out for everybody to take a look at um, we are going through events because obviously we've taken some off and put some on and things like that uh, combine some um, so if you realize the ice cream was a social club uh, funded event and the strawberry shortcake was a ticket so we're combining those so we're looking to put a budget together to for that to be a social club event oh great that's wonderful i was I, you're, that's why i said you were so efficient i just think it's helpful for people to kind of get an overview of what's going on and the other thing is helpful is for the individual or uh, events when they know kind of in really in advance like that much mm -hmm. again that they know how much money they have right. we're going for it. thank you right you're welcome anybody else that's it okay now I'd like to make a motion that we close the meeting. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next month. I'll see you on TV next month.